Josef Magnus Wehner was a German writer. He was born in 1891 in Bernbach, the son of Justus Wehner and Maria Josefina Hahn. He studied German studies and classical philology at Jena and Munich. He volunteered for service during World War I and was severely wounded at Verdun in 1916. He became an editor for the Munchet Zeitung in 1924 and became a theatre critic in 1934. His breakthrough as a writer was his 1930 Sieben vor Verdun or Seven Before Verdun, written in opposition to Erich Maria Remarque's All Quiet on the Western Front. In 1933, he was one of the 88 writers and poets who signed the vow of most faithful allegiance to Adolf Hitler, and that same year he joined the NSDAP. He received a yearly pension from Joseph Goebbels himself. After the war, he denied his National Socialist tendencies, returning to his Catholic roots as a writer, his later books only largely being appreciated in his native Thuringia. He died in 1974 in Munich. We will review his 1922 Die Mächtigste Frau Fantastische Novellen, or The Mightiest Woman Fantastic Novellas. The Mightiest Woman has a German knight returning home from the Crusades, when his page starts freaking out and begging him not to sleep in the forest for his own good. Then the page gets assaulted by kobolds and goblins and disappears, and shows up inside of a small moon, telling the knight he was cursed to be a page by the mightiest woman in the world because he refused to grant her free wishes. The knight wants to meet her at all costs, and so he travels underground, apt his sword and shield turn into a pair of fish he can ride on. Passing the realm of the Ice King, the mightiest woman's mortal enemy, he is almost eaten before he stabs the Ice King and meets the mightiest woman. They become lovers, but after a year, the Ice King comes closer and closer to their paradise. So the woman asks the knight to let her eat him. Yes, she shrinks him down and eats him, and then he wakes up in front of her house again. After another year, the Ice King shows up again, and this time she drinks the knight. The third year, she tells him he must kill a blind sunbird, singing beautifully nearby while staring into the sun all day. But when he tries to kill it, he finds out it is her in another body and then she begs him to cut off her head, and he does. And then they are both riding home to his castle, and we find out the Ice King was her father, and would make her marry him if someone would not come along who would grant her free wishes and be worthy of marrying her. The Free Virgins concerns three young girls who take a boat and steal off to join a distant nunnery, but one founds an orphanage in Constantinople, the other becomes a seer in Turkey, and the third goes blind from staring into the sun and turns into a swan to become the wife of the swan prince. The charcoal burner has a charcoal burner in the woods missing his wife. When he dreams of a woman with green hair and then follows another woman into a church, who turns out to have bones for eyes, and he winds up in hell, where he is thrown into the bed of the devil's grandmother before waking up and finding it was a dream. These stories are definitely fantastic, though sometimes so many weird things happen one after another that it feels like a bit of whiplash. 